and industry in Abuja. That's uh, Dr. Chijoke Ekechuku. Thank you very much, Dr. Chidoke. I also have joining me via Skype an energy consultant, Charles Majomi. Many thanks, gentlemen, for joining me for your time. Thank you very Welcome. much. Welcome. Okay, Dr. Chidoke, let me start with you. Uh, I, I know a, a lot has been expected in the business world. Now, what do you think? Whoever becomes the Minister of Finance, what do you think should be uh, the quick fix? What should be the immediate things that need to be done immediately to get into office? First of all, I expect that the person that will be Minister for Finance should be that person who is knowledgeable about okay. the fiscal policy of a country. I also expect that the person must have some requisite qualifications to be able to handle the uh, enormous uh, 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 the, the size of the business of um, uh, the fiscal policy of Nigeria. Now, having said this, whoever that takes that position should actually know there is a lot of um, expectations from him or her. The person should also know that um, the country needs a lot of major fiscal policy um, decisions now to be able to generate some growth that will um, remove any kind of threat from where the country may be finding it difficult to, to, to exist. Today we know that um, uh, the country is trying to um, make sure that the economy grows and continues to grow, but the expectations are not what we are seeing today. So the fiscal policy must collaborate very well with the monetary policy in order to have very good policies for this economy to grow. Um, that is just what we expect the minister to know, and uh, obviously the person must know what he or she wants to do and must know what problems the country is encountering in terms of revenue, in terms of uh, debt, in terms of um, other issues that are affecting the fiscal policy. Okay, l l let me talk to Charles now. Charles, the oil and gas industry has been challenged for some time. Legislation not being attractive for investments. A lot of issues surrounding the oil, Nigeria's oil and gas industry. And that's where we get money to run this economy, even as at today, despite efforts to improve non-oil exports. Charles, what are expectations from whoever takes over from the former minister, uh, Ibe Kachiku? Well, let me just first of all say that you are absolutely right. The oil and gas industry has failed substantially to deliver um, the type of growth that the sector demands, both through failure um, from a capacity and operational uh, points of view, and also from um, external investments point of view. So if we're to be forward looking in terms of how we're going to address the growth and the development of the nation um, as, a bio, as, a, as a consequence of industry reform, then we really should be looking at multiple areas. I think the first area is um, the revamping of the refineries. We keep talking about that, but we don't seem to understand, or we, still, we don't seem to, um, to link that to how crucial it is for the development of our national economy. I mean, I've been on your program several times. I've talked about the issues that are important to this country and, and how they're tied to adding value to resources. Instead of exporting our raw materials, we need to be able to process our energy resources locally. It creates value chains of employment. It saves us on foreign reserves that we are spending on importing products. Um, it gives, um, it gives a, a, um, a sense of geopolitical importance to ourselves as a region. I think the other issue is the issue of fiscals. We're very unclear around fiscal matters, especially concerning uh, profit-sharing contracts, um, um, sh um, price and tariffs for gas, um, um, the contracting cycle. Do you know that we are one of the most expensive countries in the world to produce crude oil. The price of producing crude oil per barrel is about $30 in Nigeria, okay? If we can optimize on those processes for producing crude oil, then we will enhance our profits and we will be able to channel more of our revenues from crude oil into 
the growth and development of our economy. I would also say that um, LPG penetration is another big issue. One of the great ironies on the continent is that we're the second largest producer of LPG, which Nigerians know commonly as um, what is used in cooking uh, gas, but it's LPG being propane is also a feedstock for vital industrial processes. We do not consume on a per capita basis LPG in a manner that's commensurate with our production. In fact, we're one of the lowest uh, LPG consumers in the world, in the, on the continent, despite being the second largest um, LPG producer. So that has to be corrected. I think also you're talking about institutional reform. Our institutions are weak, especially in the oil and gas sector. And as long as you have weak institutions, governing a sector as crucial as the energy sector in our, in our economy, we're going to have the kind of malfunctions that we've seen from, most recently, this $9 billion award that was really a, um, um, that was really a failure of governance as much as anything else. I think the, the, the last big issue that I wanted to, to, uh, to discuss also is the issue of the Niger Delta. Um, the Niger Delta host communities, uh, the approach we take to understanding the kind of derivation that's, that's accruable to host communities, the environmental degradation that oil, production, oil and gas production upstream activities are causing in these communities, the capacity for these communities to destabilize uh, productive activities in those areas and impact negatively on, on our own GDP growth um, aspirations should also be taken into consideration. Okay. We, we're, very, we're very good at putting plasters on serious wounds. The amnesty program was a plaster. We have to evolve beyond that. Otherwise, we're going to find that the Niger Delta might spill over um, into controversy again and conflict, and this will definitely affect the sector. Okay. Forward. Okay. Now, Dr. Dr. Okay, you, you, you take my next question. Let's look at budget and planning. We've had issues with the budget circle and other issues, implementation, proper implementation of our budget, which is critical to economic development. Uh, what do you think? Do you think that anything is going to change this time around? Well, um, with the political will, things can change. But we expect that the budget and planning minister should first of all have a target of making sure that the budget uh, cycle starts from January to December and should ensure that that is retained. For many years, we have not had that happen. And um, once he um, promises Nigerians that he will start the budget from the beginning of the year, which is January to December, that is number one. Number two is to ensure that um, there is a whole lot of collaborations with um, the Minister of Finance and uh, CBN, because neither the budget and planning nor finance nor CBN, uh, none of them can actually operate in isolation. For us to have a, a good growth of our economy and a, uh, an economy that has to move to change the lives of the, of the people, then the three major ministries must work together. In other words, the budget and planning person must be such that should be able to ensure that various departments and ministries do not uh, manipulate all the, all the budgets that we have always seen and to ensure that um, um, revenue is available to execute what the capital side of the budget is requ requ requiring and the recurrent side of the budget is requiring. So if these things are done and there is enough revenue to be able to fund the budget, uh, of course, you also know that the, the, the debt management office has to come in there to be able to help in all these things we're talking about. So it requires a whole lot of collaborations amongst the financial uh, departments of the, of, of the federal government. As a follow-up to that, so I expect that uh, Dr. Chinoke, yes. let, me, let, let me quickly follow you up on that. You're a member of the business community and you see directives by the central bank lately all about uh, strengthening the economy, strengthening local production and capacity. How well is this coming to you and your members, particularly the recent one on food imports? 
the, the, the major purpose um, of banning the use of our foreign currency in importing um, some food, well, food, food importation um, is it, it, actually a right step in the right direction. But I, I, I maintain that it must be um, systematic. It's not going to be so abrupt because there are some of the food items that we need to measure to know whether we have local capacity enough to produce for Nigerian consumption. And if we don't have enough capacity, then we have to be reducing um, whatever the importation we're having gradually until we'll stop funding such importation. But I think this is going to improve the local capacity of food production. It's actually going to create a lot of jobs. Many Nigerians are going to go into all this production. And um, we expect that in the long run, we're going to be better for it. But I know it may affect the prices of goods and services in the short run, and that is just what we have to be careful about so that it doesn't also affect adversely our, the inflation figure. So it is a good decision to be made, but we need to take it systematically. Okay, Charles, Charles, on, on your part, you've, you've, talk, you've, you've talked a lot about legislation, challenges in the sector, but I, I want to see us, in one word, how can we attract more investment? I remember the last time there were trade shows all around India, some other countries, to actually attract investment to the oil and gas sector. How can we get that working at this time? Well, I, I mean, I can answer you in one word. Seriousness. Seriousness of purpose and seriousness of those elected officials who are there to represent the interests of Nigerians. We have every single thing it takes in this country to attract investors of the highest caliber from around the world into various sectors of our industry value chain. But we've failed to do so primarily because we have not got the capacity within our organizations to fully understand what it is that we have and how best to leverage that. Now, when you're having bilateral discussions with an investor, this is critical. If an investor gets wind of the fact that you don't know what you're talking about and you're asking him to come and invest in your country, he won't take you very seriously and you'll attract the wrong types of people. The second issue is sanctity of contract. Now, it's very significant that we should talk about that a little bit because you are probably aware um, um, from your own news stories of what happened with this $9 billion settlement that was um, uh, given against the Nigerian government for a contractual default that, that happened with a little-known Irish company who was supposed to build a gas plant. Now, constantly, every single day, we see, uh, without commenting on the specifics of that arrangement, and I'm not say, certain that that's the best example, but we see on a daily basis unilateral activities by government where a new government will come into place and completely ignore many of the arrangements, contractual arrangements that were made by previous governments, okay? This detracts from investor um, uh, seriousness and confidence. I think the third thing that we need to see is a strong and meaningful government. An investor wants the assurances, especially if it's a multi-billion dollar complex investment, they need the assurances of the head of state and his cabinet. Can't be a situation where this person says one thing, the other guy says another thing, and nothing happens at the end of the day. From an industry, and then the last point I wanted to make is, I think from an industry and from an operational point of view, stability in the Niger Delta, where 70% of our onshore energy resources are located, is critical. And how do we gain that um, assurance that we can pass on to investors? Well, it's by creating workable frameworks of host community engagement, whereby an investor knows or has a certain degree of assurance that the community are there to enable and empower the investment rather than to uh, um, step, but rather than to detract that investment from taking place. Charles Majomi, Energy Consultant and former Director General of Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry at Okokechukuchi Joke. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us in setting an agenda 
for our new ministers. We'll see how all of that plays out.